What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Wildcast. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the latest appeal of Ghislaine Maxwell that's been denied by the uh, second U.S. Court of Appeals in New York. And this has to do with the U.S. versus Ghislaine Maxwell case, as you guys can see on the screen. Now, this is the same court that ordered Gil uh, the, the unsealing of the def uh, defamation testimony from April 2016. But that was for the Virginia Roberts versus Ghislaine Maxwell case, which is a civil suit. This appeal related to the U.S. v. Maxwell case, which is a criminal prosecution that's happening in the Southern District of New York. And this particular order, this particular uh, uh, denial of appeal has to do with the appeal that um, the Ghislaine Maxwell side was seeking back in September 2nd of this year. So this was an appeal of a decision made by, made by Judge Allison where she denied the modification of a protective order that both sides um, agreed to, or Ghislaine Maxwell's side was forced to agree to, back in um, Ju uh, July 30th, as you guys can see here. Um, this is an appeal of um, the protective order that was entered into by July on July 30th by both parties, and here is that that particular uh, protective order basically had to do with uh, the government asking the court to safeguard the uh, identity of the victims and also making sure that the witnesses who are going to testify in trial has access to all the discovery materials that they need. Gillian and Maxwell's side was basically asking the government to um, let them know, force the government to let them know the identities of some of the victims that have not come forward um, in the case that they do not have the access to. But Gillian and Maxwell was asking the court to give access to those victims who, who want to remain um, unknown to Gillian and Maxwell for good reason reason because Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein, Jeffrey Epstein at least has been known to basically try to force people, try to intimidate people like he did back in Miami. Um, and Ghislaine Maxwell learned from Jeffrey Epstein. So people are afraid in the government and also the victims themselves that Ghislaine Maxwell might try those some of those tra same tricks. So that's the reason that, that they wanted to protect the identity of these witnesses and keep them away from Ghislaine Maxwell. So this protective order, the one you're seeing on the screen, was uh, pa was accepted, to, uh, accepted by the court. And... Um, and it, it, it's been in place since July 30th. There were slight modifications made to it, but in general, the things I talked about, protecting the identity, identity of the victims, of some of the nameless victims, and also making sure that the witnesses who are going to testify in trial have all the access to the discovery information that they need. That was the basic uh, goal of that protective order. So that's in place. Now, this appeal was was the Gill and Maxwell trying to overturn that particular protective order because they want to know the names of those victims and um, they want to they want to make sure that they they restrict as much information going to the victims as possible so they can't properly testify in trial. That's their real goal here. But anyways, both of those things have been denied because the judge has denied their protective order. And the second thing that they wanted to do was to consolidate, as you guys can see here, consolidate the instant uh, the existing appeal, which is this appeal, with the appeal in the Virginia Roberts versus Maxwell case, which is a civil case. So they wanted to fuse uh, two appeals from a civil case and a criminal case, which is a weird request to ask for. And that has also been denied uh, now in this case as well. So I'm going to read you guys some relevant parts of this document and so you guys can get an idea of what we're talking about here. The Supreme Court has identified just four circumstances in criminal cases that come within the exception. Motions to dismiss invoking double jeopardy. Motions to reduce bail. Motions to dismiss under speech or debate clause and the force administration of anti-psychotic medication. And, the, and they go on to say, Maxwell does not appeal from an order falling within one of these categories. Instead, she appeals from a, a denial of her motion to modify a protective order, which we have held does not fall within the collateral order exception. Okay, so according to a Supreme Court precedent, and jurisdiction, they are basically rejecting this request. So we decline to exercise jurisdiction where we have none and accordingly dismiss this appeal for lack of jurisdiction. So that's the ultimate reason. Also, it doesn't uh, fall within any of these four prongs. And this is the four prong test that she would have to pass in order to get this done. So 
you know, um, appealing a modifying a protective order because it was denied before from another judge is not one of the reasons that you can use. So that was denied. In the alternative, Maxwell asks this court issue a writ of mandamus. A writ of mandamus is basically a court order um, forcing an institution to meet some kind of legal standard. So, you know, a, a court can demand a corporation or a local government or the federal government or a state government or an individual to do something if um, the the plaintiff, the person who's asking them to do it, has a good case. For example, if Ghislaine Maxwell had a legitimate claim here, then a writ of mandamus would be uh, would be uh, ordered by this court as and make the government do whatever she's asking for. But this writ has been denied. So this is what they say. This court will issue the writ as an exception to the finality rule only in exceptional circumstances amounting to judicial usurpation of power or a clear abuse of discretion. So basically, if a judge does something insane that is not within a previous court precedent and it doesn't make sense in this particular case, which is a rare instance, most of the time judges don't do crazy stuff because they know it's going to go get turned over on appeal. So they tend to stick to precedent and be relatively, you know, uniform with what's been done in the past. Very rarely do judges do crazy things. So the only way they're saying here that the only way they would um, order a writ of mandamus to um, to the district court to modify the protective order is in a case where the judge basically usurped their, her own power and also um, ha had some clear abuse of discretion. And this is what they conclude. The appeals court says here, Maxwell failed to demonstrate su uh, that such exceptional circumstances exist and that the district court uh, usurped its power or abused its discretion. Accordingly, we decline to issue a writ of mandamus modifying the protective order. So there you go. So finally, the other thing that they ask for is to consolidate a civil appeal with a criminal appeal, which is ridiculous. It makes no sense. But um, here's what the judges say. To secure further relief of formal consolidation, Maxwell, quote, bears the responsibility or bears the burden of showing the commonality of factual and legal issues in different actions. So this is the standard. So basically, this would this would only be applicable if um, the cases shared a common common set of facts and or had the same judge. So sometimes it happens that similar cases are appealed under the same judge and they're technically considered two different cases. But if the facts are similar enough and if the judges are the same and, you know, it's a judge in that case, in this example that I'm setting up, the judge would be the same, but there's slightly different circumstances, then you might be granted, um, you know, this fusion that they're asking for, this consolidation. But here we have two judges. We have Allison and we have Preska who are overseeing a civil case the Presco one is a civil case and then we have the um, we have the criminal case that's being over uh, overseen by Judge Allison so that's a criminal case and a civil case and they want to fuse those appeals together this makes no sense and during that um, that the unsealing hearing the judges were confused as to what Gillian Maxwell's lawyer was even asking for I, I watched the I obviously I listened and watched the whole thing it was uh, hilarious and kind of weird because usually the judges know better than the lawyers and the judges were like what are you asking us to do here multiple times so it was hilarious anyways um here the parties judges and legal issues presented in these appeals lack common identity the criminal appeal concerns a denial of maxwell's motion to modify a protective order while the civil appeal concerns an unsealing order that's the unsealing that happened back in um, October 13th. Further, as the district court correctly noted, Maxwell, quote, provides no coherent explanation connecting the discovery materials at issue in the criminal case to the civil litigation. Remember that the civil litigation has to do with um, Virginia Roberts and the, you know, the criminal acts that she has alleged uh, Maxwell has committed that happened back in like 2001 when it comes to Prince Andrew and a whole bunch of other years. And, um, you know, on and off until she left them. And the, the criminal case in the Southern District of New York under Judge Nathan has to do with crimes that Ghislaine Maxwell committed from 1994 to 1997. So even the frame of the time frame that we're dealing with is completely different. The facts of the case are completely different. One case involves just Virginia Roberts. The other case involves a whole bunch of victims, which is why the government is doing a criminal case against Ghislaine Maxwell. So the facts of the case are different. The judges are different and the parties are different. 
Okay, so the 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 criminal case has nothing to do, nothing directly to do with Virginia Roberts, although she was one of the people who were victimized, but not back in 1994. The civil case has to do with Virginia Roberts. The criminal case has to do with society at large and all the victims that have been victimized by Ghislaine Maxwell and, um, you know, relatedly uh, Jeffrey Epstein. So the two cases are not not the same, and therefore the fusion or consolidation of the two has been rejected by the appeals court. Conclusion of the court is as follows. We have reviewed all the arguments raised by the defendant, Maxwell, on appeal and find them to be without merit. For the foregoing reasons, the appeal is dismissed and the motion to consolidate is also denied as moot. Any appeal in this criminal case shall be referred to another panel in the ordinary course. All right, so that is the latest on the Ghislaine Maxwell front. Uh, once again, she has another setback, uh, nothing new. Most of the things that have happened in this case are setbacks. And by the way, I, I predicted everything that was said here. I, I told you guys in my last video when we covered this that the consolidation was not going to happen because like I said in my video, the facts of the case are not the same and the judges are not the same. That's basically what they said is basically what I said in my video. And um, also another thing that I forgot to mention was the fact that the time frames are different, which is relevant to a, to a lawsuit. And the parties involved are different. Virginia Roberts is directly involved and she's the plaintiff in the civil case. While in the criminal case, it's the government who's suing them and they represent the society at large and not just one victim. So facts are different. Judges are different. So that was um, uh, a foregone conclusion. I did not know what was going to happen with the protective order. I guessed that the judge, uh, the appellate courts would reject it. And that's exactly what they have done. So once again, Ghislaine Maxwell has been denied and the judges here were extremely fair. And remember that these were the same judges that let uh, Ghislaine Maxwell put, uh, put a pause on the un unsealing process back in July. So these documents were originally supposed to be released on August 5th, released to the public, but that was, that was stopped on July 31st when Ghislaine Maxwell appealed that decision. So these judges are very fair. They have ruled in Ghislaine Maxwell's favor before, but in this case, they just couldn't find any kind of legal basis to side with Ghislaine Maxwell. So her appeal was denied. So the judges, these judges, particularly the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, has sided with Ghislaine Maxwell before. So there's no, there should be no crying of unfairness when it comes to this. They've, they have no problem siding with Ghislaine Maxwell because they've done it before. So that's all I got to say for this video. As always, Gillian Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein videos get demonetized by YouTube. So if you guys support people like myself covering this story, make sure you support us. You can support me on um, Patreon. The link will be in the top right hand corner. You can also support me down below by joining channel memberships by clicking the join button. And last but not least, make sure you're subscribed and you hit the bell so you get notifications when I drop videos. With that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, peace. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch and consider some of the ideas I present in my videos. If you appreciate my evidence-based, non-partisan approach to reporting legal and political news, please consider supporting me on Patreon. My long-term goal on this channel is to get to a point where I can do news analysis full-time. Grassroots funding is the best way for independent news reporters to remain uncorrupted by corporate influences. Even if you can only afford $1 a month, those dollars add up in the aggregate, and it will be much appreciated by me. With that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, peace.